Hi everybody, this is David Panush from the Edmund Burke School, and this is a video introducing our new big unit about decision making. And um, we're going to look at all these fun things, which is going to really turn what we've been doing uh, around, but also I think complement a lot of the things that we learned in the first part of the course. And what we're going to start off with is some is a model, just like before, a model to explain human behavior. In this case, we're focusing in on decision making. We're trying to explain why do humans make the decisions they make? Why do they think they make the decisions they make? And what is really happening? And the big, big idea that we are gonna focus in on is this idea called system one and system two. And the idea there is that each of us has Two brains, two brains, okay? And this idea was essentially created and come up with as a, as a model by um, two psychologists, economics, e economists, guys um, named Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky, and for which uh, Kahneman won the Nobel Prize. Tversky would have also won probably, but he was um, passed away and they don't award the Nobel Prize uh, to people who are not currently alive. So when you think of System 1 and System 2, uh, the name to associate it with uh, Kahneman and Tversky, you'll hear them in your lives as you go forward, and you'll be like, yeah, I know who that guy is, and you feel really smart. So System 1 and System 2, the idea is that as we evolved, we had an older brain that, we were, that our ancestors had, and on top of that, the big thing that we have is this prefrontal cortex, right, that comes in way later, evolutionarily speaking. Okay, and system one is the brain that was there first, and system two is the brain that comes on later. So literally we're talking about a model of two different brains that deal with the world differently, take in stimuli differently, make decisions differently, but they're all in the same head. And somehow we have to resolve that. The mind that you all associate more with your mind is system two. When you think of yourself, you think of yourself as conscious, right? <laughs> I'm aware of me being alive and being a person and thinking. You associate yourself, generally, most people think of themselves as rational, right? So you're logical. You make decisions and you think through things, point A to point B to point C. That's rational thought. That happens here, okay? And because you're capable of rational thought, your system two brain is capable of overcoming biases, and mistakes, which we'll talk a little bit more about, which come out of system one. But the system two brain is slow. It is slow and effortful. And literally, we mean it burns more calories, okay? So it takes more time to think through a problem step by step by step. It is much easier to just snap judgment, guess, right? And there are problems that we face that we need this slow, effortful thinking. And when we take our time and do slow, effortful thinking and use rational thought and overcome our biases and mistakes, an awful lot of the time we are correct in the ways that we use our system two brain. Like mostly when you read, you read the words correctly. Mostly when you do a math problem that you know how to do, you do it correctly. Mostly when you get up in the morning uh, to you know, pour milk in your cereal, you don't end up pouring orange juice in your cereal. You pour milk in your cereal. So mostly, when you apply system two in the right ways, it does what it's supposed to do. It is correct, but it is slow and effortful. Now it is newer, and that is one of the reasons that it sets us apart from many other species. Now, even there can be arguments about all that, but the way we can think about the future in particular, imagining things that are not there and planning for them and thinking about them and then making a decision based on those things is not something that we think a lot of other species can do. We don't know for sure, but it seems to set us apart. The other thing is when we do make our decisions, we tend to take the credit for those decisions as a thinking decision, a rational thought, a conscious decision, and we don't tend to think of it as something that uh, was was not any of those things. Okay, so that's system two, and now let's look at system one. System one is the older parts of the brain. It came earlier. It is super fast compared to system two. Okay, so it's fast. It can make automatic, habitual decisions. You don't need to think about breathing. If a ball comes whizzing at you, 
you will move, and some of you may have right experienced this, you might move your hand to either catch the ball or bat it away or duck long before you are conscious that the ball is even coming. And that is because your optical nerves take in the fact that the ball is coming, they go straight to the older parts of the brain that control movement, and you start moving long before they get to the last part of the brain, the conscious parts of the brain that says, oh, there's a ball coming, okay? So it's fast, it's automatic, it's habitual. Whatever you've done in the past, it tends to do again. That's easy, I'll do that. And that's key to system one. System one wants to be efficient. If I've done something before and it's worked most of the time, let's just do that again without thinking. Let's just do it because it works most of the time, okay? And again, like system two, system one is correct most of the time. It is, even though it's fast and it's snappy, um, it gets a lot of things right. If it didn't get a lot of things right, our ancestors would have died, okay? It is generally subconscious. So again, that idea that things are happening so fast, decisions are being made in your brain before you're conscious of them. Because of this, system one makes a lot of predictable mistakes. And it is full of biases because it generalizes. It generalizes. It says, there's something coming towards me. Now, should I stop and use my slow system prout two brain to figure out whether or not it is a pillow or a, a, you know, a rock? No, I don't have time for that. I'm just going to guess that something coming towards me is danger. I'm going to flinch, okay? And that's a bias because sometimes we shouldn't flinch. It's just a pillow. And you can imagine, right, in, in something, in less physical circumstances, we could be flinching when we really shouldn't be. Or we could be having a reaction that is generalized to a stereotype or prejudice without that really thinking it through. Now, again, system two, with enough time, can overcome those biases and mistakes. But we need to keep in mind, system one is always on. It is always fast. And it is always acting, often before we're aware, Okay. So again, if we sort of going with all of that, it actually is the older brain we share with animals and that it does a lot of the work there. Now, here's the thing. System two likes to think that it takes the credit and does most of our thinking and deciding. And in fact, it is not. Most of our thinking and deciding is actually done by system one, not by system two. And so when we look at it down here, <laughs> when we look at decision-making, um, here's how we think it works, okay? How we think it works is we get in some stimuli, we consider our options, and we choose the best option. That's how we think it works. And that's system two, taking credit. But what really happens a lot of the time is some kind of thing happens, we have some reaction, we do something, system one probably predisposes us to do it, and then after we've done it, subconsciously or consciously, we try and figure out an explanation. Why did I do that? Oh, this explanation sounds good. I'll come up with a justification, a rationalization, a defense that explains why I've done it. And even more to the case, I'll remember that the whole thing happened this way, how we think it works, even though it really probably happened this way. And to sort of put this together with some of the stuff we were working on before, right, these reactions are emotional. These reactions are the emotions that helped our ancestors survive. These biases worked most of the time in the ancestral environment before we were living in the societies we live in today. So they're not wrong. They're just sometimes out of date and they can't handle the modern world that we live in. And that goes to this idea of a mismatch between the way our brains actually work, system two and system one, and the way we think they work, which is a lot of system one and a little bit of system two. And that's this uh, mis mismatch, misconception. So we're going to go through this part of the course a lot of the time talking about how we, our brains actually do things and we are not really aware of them. And, our, um, and we, the stories we tell ourselves afterwards kind of keep it that way, um, so which makes it really hard to sort of dig in and understand what's going on. All right, so that is... Um, the idea, the main idea between system one and system two and how we think decision-making works versus how it actually works. And if there's one thing that you take out of this course, hopefully it's system one, uh, fast, automatic, easy, subconscious, based on feelings and emotions, full of biases and mistakes versus system two, slow, effortful, thoughtful, rational, conscious, 
All right, and um, so those are the two to keep in mind, system one versus system two. And here's the other thing, unfortunately. Um, system one is the one we use most of the time. And the reason for that is because we want to be efficient. I don't want to use the word lazy, okay? But our brains are efficient. They wanna do what's easiest. And when things are hard, slow and effortful, it, it takes a lot more effort and we do it uh, with some trepidation. All right, uh, if you have any questions, let me know.